I tell them, look up your Bible, look up the New Testament. The Arabs were in Jerusalem in the year 33 AD. We were mentioned as the tail end of that list of 17 nationalities that were celebrating Pentecost. You Americans, you were never mentioned. Neither the British were mentioned. And you keep asking us that, that, that as if we are not Christians because we are Arabs. Arab Christianity is 700 years before Islam, but they do not know. They do not know. And this ignorance breeds indifference. So this is one of the challenges. How to bring those evangelical Christians to become party with us, <clears throat> to heal the situation, rather than continue to play a double standard because they think we are Arabs, so if you are Arabs, if you are Palestinians, then you are a bunch of terrorists. We are not. This is... Yeah, well, Soraya keeps reminding me of stories that, to make, to make this meeting, I mean, less formal. I hope we're not in, the, in, in a situation that we relate to each other formally. But years ago in India, to illustrate how ignorant are the Americans, <laughs> not all of them, not many of them, especially the evangelicals, <clears throat> I was challenged to go to one of the revival meetings in Calcutta, led by an American evangelist, who said towards the end of his sermon that he would love to meet the newcomers. So would you wait, shake hands with me, pray with me? So I waited. I mean, I was not impressed by what he said in his sermon. I thought I'll challenge him, but wait to see what he's going to do with me. So this friend of mine, a Chinese, introduced me because I came from Nazareth, and Nazareth was part of Israel still. He introduced me to the evangelist Riyah from Israel. And a big smile on his face. Son of Abraham, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Jesus Christ died for you. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Let me pray for you. I was sitting, so he laid his hands on my head, prayed for me. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I said, yes, I do. Oh, praise, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Son of Abraham, let me pray for you. Are you a born again believer? I, he prayed for me. Then he asked me the question. I said, I think so. In fact, I am also a student of theology. One day I will become a priest. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is on your side. He's going to finish with all those wretched Arabs, all those wretched Palestinians. I said, Sam, I have a more pleasant surprise for you. <laughs> I'm not only a student of theology wanting to become a priest. I'm not only a Christian from day one, 33 AD. I'm an Arab Palestinian. <laughs> you know what he told me? He said, Daniel. <laughs> Why did you tell me this? I said, I wanted to learn the art of converting Jews to Christ. I want to tell you, you have received an F. You failed. Now you kneel down, I need to pray for you. <laughs> the ignorance. So that's, that's one of the challenges. To help this man stop praying for me, coming from Israel, to convert to Christianity in the manner he, he spoke. This is one. The second question is the one-state solution. The one-state solution will be rejected by Israel because it will defeat the very cause for which they have been struggling for over 100 years. One-state solution will mean in 10 years we will become the majority. Today there are 4 million Palestinians in the West Bank and the Gaza Strip, 1.3 million inside Israel, that's 5.3. 10 years will become 10. 
but then eight million. The Jewish community may become seven. One vote, one man, one vote, we defeat them if they continue to speak of democracy. So they will not accept. The easiest is what I proposed to you, a two-state solution as stage one, a federation or a confederation between the two states, and then until we learn the art of co-living, not only coexisting, keep the borders where they are. Once we learn the art of, of harmonious living, we can open the borders the way the Swiss, the French, I mean the Swiss French, the Swiss Germans, and the Swiss Italians have opened their homes and their borders to each other and prove to the world that we are capable of becoming of becoming the Switzerland of the Middle East. I hope I answered your question. Other questions? And welcome to the newcomers, Robin and Margaret. <laughs> And to Rajaya, I see here another Jerusalem eye. Um, yes, please. Yes, um, you're talking about uh, the, the state when it comes to either one state or two state solution. What is your view to if you had a state or one state solution where the state would provide everything? You know, the state would, you know, you would be under that system, under, for example, a Kilatic state, where you as a Christian, you know, like for 1,700 years, you know, when when Islam spread, we know that before the, the Ottoman Empire was destroyed, despite the fact that the Ottomans weren't the best Muslims, they themselves, you know, were weak-minded, you know. But do you think if we had, you know, uh, if we re-established the Khilafah state, the, the wonderful um, Islamic state, then it would just be justified in, in, in your course? You know, for example, when you... You know, like for example, when you look at the, the Muslims, when they had the Islamic State, they didn't see the Christians as different. Because we know that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, even when he spread Islam, he recognized the, Masa the Masihi and the Yehudi as people, as the Ahli Kitab, you know, the people of what, you know, um, would you encourage, you know, any person or any individual who would call for, you know, uh, oppression or injustice to end, by calling for the, the one-state solution, which is collateral. It's like putting the cart before the horse. It's not going to be an easy uh, route to pursue. First, the Jewish community will not accept this, because of all sorts of reasons, because Israel is the state of the Jewish At least part of it. And if we were to throw this idea, we will have more uh, difficulties those who are pursuing a different track with about an end to hostility and to conflict and war. I fully appreciate the fact that the Christians, the Arab Christians, not only the Arab Christians, also the Jews in Spain, had it much better under Islam, under the rule of Islam, than under the rule of uh, the Christians. Had it not been for Islam, Judaism would have disappeared in Spain. Islam saved the Jewish community from the Inquisition. This is a fact of history. But at the same time, with the Ottomans, this was not the case. Now, if you speak of Khalifa and the Caliphate, you don't know who's going to be the next Khalifa. Do you think that there aren't others in the area who aspire to lead the Muslim community in the world, besides the Arabs. After all, the Arab Muslims are a minority among Muslims in the world. Rather than going that way, since many in the world continue to believe that the way forward is a two-state solution, two-state in the first stage, and then what I propose, either a federation or a confederation, let, let people continue to enjoy their, their share. 